So historically, I would just take my hammer and go. Boom, 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 boom. If it was an old one, sure. But this is a brand new one, and I you don't want, want it to have it. You want it to look nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how the video starts. <laughs> What's happening? You made it. Of course we're in. Doc Torque's garage here he is over there with the green machines in here. There's a lot of green in this awesome garage. And and we have the torpedo heater turned off for a minute. But we've got a project today and it's going to be on this one, right Tom? Um, yes. Yes. So, tell us, what are we doing today? So, I acquired this particular vehicle last um, August, I believe. Maybe it was early September. Anyway, there's a video on that. <laughs> there is. A good one. And uh, so, I don't know a whole lot about the history of this car. So, one of the first things we want to do, you know, is uh, do some general maintenance type stuff. Um, so, today we're going to tear into the front brakes and wheel bearings to, you know, pack or replace or, you know, different things like that. We're going to, you know, do the brakes, probably replace the wheel bearings. I ordered rotors that aren't here yet, so... We'll film that on a different day, yeah, even though you won't know. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll say end of day, but as far as we can go today, and then we'll just flop back in. It'll be good. Sure. So today we're going to take the wheels off, take the brake calipers off, pull the rotors, inspect everything. But the left-hand side on older Mopars, like pre-73, usually came with left-hand threads on the left side of the car. That's right. That's so weird. So you have to know what you're dealing with. I've already had the rear wheels off of this car, if I remember correctly. Did I take the rear wheels off of this car? Yeah. We, yes, when we yeah, did the, when yeah. we did the uh, super stock springs. Yep. Exactly. So I know that this car does still have that. A lot of people over the years change that out, you know, switch it back to uh, right hand thread all around. That way, you know, the people at the tire shop don't break their wheel studs off. Oh, no kidding. The monkeys, as I usually refer to them. <laughs> yeah, grab it. Good to do it. <laughs> Turn up your power. This one ain't breaking loose. Hit it harder. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going to tear into this side first and probably only film this side because, you know, the other side's pretty much the same. It's a duplicate. And it's darker yeah. over there. And it's darker over there. Let's get this puppy rolling. Okay. And what do you say? <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go, action. <laughs> <laughs> surprised that these have disc brakes from I didn't realize you go back in time that far with disc brakes but it, the the brake line comes in here and goes to the two pistons on this side and then it has a connection that goes to this line that goes around to the other side Whoa, and does these what? two what that's wild and this is four piston four piston now, calibers uh, it... manufactured by Kelsey Hayes an aftermarket manufacturer back in the day Chrysler bought the brake stuff from them now, would you say I'll that... never admit this. <laughs> <laughs> this is almost identical to Mustang disc brakes. Itself. Oh, we're highlighting this port right here. Highlight. <laughs> they were they were both purchased from the same manufacturer. Really? Yeah. We won't tell anyone. Shh. <laughs> we will record this. <laughs> so so what are you doing here now? What, let's we should talk to them. Right now, I'm removing the bolts that hold the caliper onto the car. So it's gonna take the caliper off right now. So we have this now tied up to the shock, so we're not putting any stress on our brake lines. Yeah, it's a metal brake line, so we're good there. And then, so now this is free from that, and so we can start tearing into this to pull the rotor off so we can inspect the bearings. Inspect the bearings, sweet.
Well, it is a new day, as Dr. Torque was just saying. And here we are back at his place. Although I've been told that we're losing sunlight. You're late. And I'm late. I, I thought I was perfectly on time, but I stopped for some food. Anyway, on these older cars, they were assembled a little differently than most modern ones are. This one is actually a two-piece rotor and hub, except the hub's on the outside instead of on the inside like you'd normally see them. So it's kind of a weird situation where the the uh, stud goes in through here, through the rotor, and then actually presses through the hub and comes into here. And that's what holds it all together, is everything's just like crammed together really tightly. That is very and So ridiculous. since everything looked really nice, I didn't want to like tear this all apart. So I actually found somebody online that had a set of hubs for sale. And I ordered those and I have them here and I bought some new studs. Because for some reason he broke a bunch of the studs when he was disassembling. It, but were whatever. they the backwards threaded studs? Uh, they probably they may have been. Some of them probably were. That was something else we talked about is like right on right, left on left. Yeah. So <laughs> what we discovered when we were taking this apart is this has probably been done before because these were all right hand studs. R exactly. Yeah. So somebody had to change those out. But they were left hand studs on the rear. So I have three wheels that use normal lug nuts and one wheel that uses left hand thread Ooh. lug nuts so i'm gonna to have to deal with that yeah that's a future project good you found that out so, now, so case, you're gonna keep these together because you're going to want to i'm gonna wrap them up in plastic them. and put them on the shelf because i turn through car projects fairly quickly and <laughs> sometime in the next 20 years i'll probably have use for them well well this, all right so we were talking about this so we've got what's a car in the backyard we've got one that's back there that we might be working on summertime yeah summertime. it's a 68 dart gt and the question was, you know, what parts would we need? And I think the answer was, I think I have most of the parts, <laughs> but not not because you bought them for that car, but because you have over the years stored parts, right? Well, I mean, it's, a, it's a combination of things. Yeah, so it's so it's kind of awesome. So well, I mean, <laughs> duh, <laughs> duh. So okay, I'm gonna put this down over here, and so I kind of, you know did things like a uh, television chef would, where I already have some stuff done and some <laughs> stuff not done. That's awesome. So Jake could come over and film some of this. So anyway, this is one of those hubs I was talking about previously buying. And so I cleaned it all up, and so it's all, you know, not dirty. Mm -hmm. But you can see it still has the inner, the race for the inner bearing there. Oh, sure. But the outer one I've already removed. But yeah, I figured cool. I could show you Removing that, so I got a hammer. <laughs> not a huge hammer, I got bigger, so. It's the right size hammer. It might be, I'm not sure. But in any case, I don't know if you can see this on camera. Let's go out in the light a little bit. Step into the light. If you look down in there, you can see like shiny stuff. And there's just a little lip, a little tiny lip of that race. Meaning this guy. Showing. No. No, not meaning that. Way no. Way down below? Da way down below. This shiny thing right oh, here. On that. You see how it has a lip right here? Mm hmm It has another lip on the other side. Oh. oh man. Phone call. Sammy Hagar is calling me. Phone break. Yep. Sammy's on the line. Got to take it when he calls. Yep, I'll answer that one. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, on the, on the shiny thing, there's a, uh, you know, flat part on both the top and the bottom. And so you have to find that little tiny lip. It's, you only see yeah, a little bit see of it. Now, huh? yep. You need to hit that with a punch. Drift, it's only slightly bent. A, dr <laughs> a drift, a drift punch? Well, it's a pin punch or a drift or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't have a sharp point on it. Mm, that's, that's the differentiator. So you find that, you smack it. And then you go back to the other side, find it again. Then you go back to the first side, smack it. <laughs> and, and we're just, just cause you gotta work it out in the line? Or yeah, it's pressed in there. Wedge. It's actually slightly bigger than the hole it's going into. So it crams in there and it's compressed slightly. So you actually have to kind of wobble it out like this as you're going. Otherwise, if you went too far, it's just gonna pinch, right? Well, you can't go too far. Oh, really? It's hardened steel. It's only oh. gonna go a certain <laughs> so, distance before it says, nope, I'm done. That's it. That's all you get. Anyway, this one sort of starts on its own down in that hole. 
And sometimes, you know, some people would do this kind of thing to get it started. Tappy, tap, tap, tap. But you see how it's kind of going back and forth, like how yeah. it was when it came out? Uh-huh. Just kind of, it's sort of just, I don't know what I'm trying to say, wobbling and rotating. It's not, it's not going in even. You feeling in there to see if the ridge is, the gap is closed? Yeah. Just trying to see if I can get a fingernail in there, and I can't. So I'm going to say that's in there. Sweet. Now, Here. for real action. Reaction. 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 Here's a, <laughs> so here's one of the small outer wheel bearings. Right now, as it comes from the factory, it's all shiny. Well, until I touch it with my greasy fingers. It? but it has no grease in it. You always need to grease wheel bearings. So what I do is you see there's like, you can probably see some sunlight through there if you hold the camera just right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. You wanna fill all those gaps with grease. Why does it come non-greased? So you can use the type of grease you want. Oh, okay. Plus, so they don't pay for grease and greasing. <laughs> and then we market it as a benefit to you. Exactly. But anyway, what I, that you can buy tools for this. I've never owned any. I kind of want the hands-on approach of knowing that my bearings are packed correctly. So what you do is you put a glob of grease on your hand and then you take this and you you know, you saw that gap there. What you're trying to do is just cram, let me cram more grease, a little bit more grease. You're cramming grease in that gap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you just keep cramming it over and over again until you see it come out the gap on the, on the top. Oh, okay, that's a great tip. And so, you just go a little at a time. And the first part where you're trying to get it to come out the top the first time always seems to take longer than the rest. But you see how it's kind of squishing out of there? Mm -hmm. That means we know between those two bearings, we've got grease on both sides and then in, the, in between them. Those two, cool. you know, roller thingies. So you just turn it in your hand a tiny bit and you do the same thing. That's it. And see, it's packed, packed on both sides. Packed on both sides? Super messy. Action! <laughs> so, now that we've packed all of our wheel bearings and installed our races and got the hub and the rotor together, it's time to install our seal. Cool. So, the seal goes on the inside, so it goes between the spindle which is that shiny thing sticking out from the side of the car there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Take, take a quick little look-see at that. Yeah, it goes between that and this bearing. So this bearing has to go in first. Don't ask me how I know that you should always make sure you <laughs> install the bearing before you put you didn't the have to, You didn't try that. You just knew. I just have heard people talk about it. You heard, heard it said. Yeah, so anyway, this goes bloop in there. Some nice greasy in there. And then here's a the seal. Nice. So before I install the seal, sealy. yeah. It looks like the one from the snowblower, except bigger. Probably similar. If they want to in the back of the shaft. But before I install a seal, I always like to put a little grease on it. So when you put it on the car, if the Spindle is dry. It wasn't greased. This doesn't spin on the spindle and burn itself up. Oh, right. That would be good. So anyway, that's where it goes. And it needs to be pounded in kind of like the race, except more gently. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that I kind of take a heavy, a heavy hitting. Okay, yeah. so then you put your driver on it. So it's hitting the whole thing evenly. And you check as you go. <laughs> yeah. Just so make sure everything's looking good. And lined up. And that's it. Nice. And action. Grace. Grace. It's not just a movie from the 70s. <laughs> I just wonder where you're going to go with that. <laughs> so what are we doing here? I'm just putting a little bit of grease on the spindle so that the 
surfaces that have stuff running running on them are greased up and surfaces that don't just don't rust mostly just about rust preventative <laughs> for me and then the same sort of thing just as a rust preventative since i cleaned that all up real nice in there i'm just gonna slather some grease around rust is not good and grease is good at preventing rust of all that so Oops. oh man you knocked over my grease i know i probably got it on grease my knee killer. too yep seriously how'd you do that because i touched the top of that wow so anyway i'm just sliding it back in there and i'm gentle with it so i don't damage that seal as it pops on it went on really easily so so we're good there's a bearing that we packed with grease i need grease everywhere and it goes on here like that. Slides right on in there like nothing. Like butter. <laughs> like cold butter. Like cold butter? <laughs> Not quite as good as hot well, butter. Still, but... It's still winter time, so right. yeah. <laughs> it is chilly. Then, I've got a washer here with the old bearing. That is the retainer for the outside. Then, I got a nut. You sure that's not a bolt? This is a nut. I don't have fastener dyslexia. <laughs> I don't either, they're all They're bolts. all bolts. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, we're done, let's drive it. Let's go. You just put on the little micro wheel. So then you go and you find your pliers and you tighten this nut a lot. This is a very, very, <laughs> to be very tight nut. It's the main thing you want to seed everything. You want to make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Things are spinning. They spin kind of hard, a little harder than I'd like. So I'm just spinning things to get everything worked in a little bit. And then there's an actual factory spec for this. I think it's you tighten it to 19 foot pounds and then you loosen it and then you tighten it to 19 foot pounds and then you turn it back a certain number of turns, which is, you know, like an eighth of a turn or something like that. And then you adjust it to fit something. But I don't have all that stuff, including the correct specs. So, <laughs> I'm just making sure everything's together at the moment. And then if you've seen, if you remember from when we took this apart, I have a cotter pin here, it goes through a hole. The hole is right there. And so I've got a thing here that goes on the nut like 12 different ways. And then it's got little notches for the cotter pin. So, you you try it out different ways to see what fits like right there it would fit but i think i might have it too tight mm. so i think what i'm going to actually do yeah so that's interesting that instead of just having something that pulls through and, and the nut has notches in it it's a sl it's a sleeve or whatever that goes yeah over some it. cars have it one way and some cars have it this way you know it's just whatever they felt like that year <laughs> I guess. Yeah. If I was smart, I'd probably get the right size nut for this so I don't damage it with my pliers. I think that's good for right now. I'm going to drive it a little bit and then I'll take it apart again and adjust it correctly after, you know, things have run in a little bit. And of course, if I was smart, I would have gotten a new cotter pin. I will get a new cotter pin, but I don't have one right now. So for right now, what I'm going to do... Oops. I'll find the right tools and get that put together correctly. Oh, another thing to be real careful of when you're doing all of this is don't touch this surface with greasy hands. 
<laughs> you don't want to grease up the brakes? Uh, no. Cap. Cap. Scalpel. Scalpel. Cap. Oh, I touched you. <laughs> you did. I knew it. So it's okay. We're good. Because I'm everything else down here is shiny, and I just got grease all over this, so it's not really shiny <laughs> anymore. I bought new ones of these. So it all it does look much cooler with all new. That's actually kind of neat. Well, and the main reason I did it is because this old cap here. I'm gonna keep for this rotor. Oh sure. So I can put the, all one put it back together and that way the bearing doesn't try to fall out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know how I said don't pound on screwdrivers? Yeah. <laughs> I don't listen to anybody who tells me try what to do. <laughs> that's it. I'm too close to my other car. Yeah. They're very, very close. It's very tight. <laughs> it's like zero gap. <sighs> to turn my my hammer sideways. Might be able to do this, I guess. <laughs> but but then it's awkward. That's most of the way on. I'm not gonna get rough with it on video because you know. Yeah. This is a family friendly show. <laughs> this is a family friendly show. <laughs> so I thought we were gonna have problems. So I stopped we stopped the video. <laughs> and then the caliper went on. So now, okay, so yeah, we thought we were gonna have to compress those. Yeah, I thought I was gonna have to compress the pistons because this was maybe a thicker rotor, and so the pads that were in here weren't gonna work anymore. Mm -hmm. I have different pads for this. I'm not gonna put them on today because they're inside the house, and I also don't want to compress the pistons. Yeah, so I would have to, I'm gonna yeah. start with what I've got and go from there. <laughs> but I do have my bolts, and they go somewhere. These holes back here. Yeah, that's solid. Okay, so what do you think about the project? What's good? Good, I hope. Obviously, I haven't driven it yet, so we'll see. This is before the days of uh, analog brakes, so I don't want them to be way better brakes. Yeah. Because then, you, you just know, lock up and you slide. just lock up and slide, but at the same time, they might, you know, resist fade better or something, I don't know. Yeah, they do. They, I think they will. Cool. So, if you want to check out another video, another project that we've had on this car, we did the rear springs, leaf springs, what would you call that? Yeah, the super stock springs. Yeah, super stock springs. It's pretty cool because it changed the ride height. So we like that. Well, Dr. Tor, thank you so much for letting us tag along with your project on one of your cool green cars. Isn't that a cool color? I like both these colors a lot. So that's pretty cool. And thank you for joining us. Hold on, hold on. That screen went black. <laughs> there it is. And thank you for joining us. You know how we're gonna take you out? It's with the patent pending fish bump of friendship. But don't forget, if you want to, go check out the other video. If you wanna see when we're gonna be doing things, hit the bell so you know you're alerted. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Now we take you out with the fish bump of friendship. <laughs> wow. Kids, I'm telling you, this is Uncle Jake. You'll thank me later. You can't tell me what to do, old man. You can't tell me what to do, you're an old man. <laughs> Got my glove stuck. <laughs> Should've gotten the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna take his out with the hammer? <laughs> the hammer in the back of Jake's head. Pow! <laughs>